orientation and mobility in the winter. Hi, this is Paul from North Dakota Vision Services School for the Blind. I'm going to give you a few winter mobility tips. Uh, first of all, we'll start off with clothing. Wear good clothing. If you're in a climate where you have anywhere near zero um, or sub-zero temperatures, um, you really need multiple layers. I'm not going to lecture you on that. Everyone knows you need good clothing. Starts off with good footwear. Um, wearing boots when you have snowy conditions is important, something with a good tread. You can buy ice cleats, there's a variety of those that if you live in a climate where it's icy. Uh, but the main thing is good uh, footwear that, uh, that has perhaps some coverage around the ankle. Um, also, obviously, you need a hat and gloves. Uh, depending upon how cold it is, you might need a very good uh, thermal cap, something to cover your ears if you're out walking um, because your ears are very easily frostbit. Um, but again, if you're going to go out and cross the street or something of that nature, you need to be able to uncover the ears so you don't have your hearing obstructed. So I'll place my hat on and um, get zippered up. And the last thing, obviously, before we go out is good gloves or mittens. Um, most of the time gloves are going to work pretty well. You can use a regular um, grip position and use two-point touch cane technique. However, I will say if you're in a particularly cold climate, mittens will work better for protection. That makes it challenging to hold the cane in the traditional fashion with the index finger extended along the grip. But uh, if you're in a really uh, snowy condition, you're going to probably need to have mittens because uh, it's just going to be a little bit more protection for you. Okay, I just want to explain a little bit more about the mitten and glove combination. Uh, you can get them in wool. This one happens to have a nylon exterior and I like it because again I can take my index finger, I can place it along the grip of the cane and I can use the cane in a very traditional two-point method and I get good control of the cane shaft. Um, if, however, it's very cold out, um, I can use the mitten. The grip is going to be different, and um, that, you might not like that if you like extending the finger along the grip, but when you're in snowy conditions, you have to first and foremost be safe. All right, let's go. Using a standard cane tip in the snow. Um, what you can see here is that I'm able to use a regular cane tip. Uh, the sidewalk is snow covered, uh, but really I had no difficulty coming down this sidewalk and detecting the edge of this driveway. There is a very well defined ridge of snow on either side of the sidewalk, allowing me to shoreline fairly easily. However, you'll notice that occasionally if it's soft snow, the cane tip will get lodged in the snow and there'll be a little bit of a recoil. It's not a huge problem, it can be expected, um, but um, the main thing is if you're looking for a driveway or an intersecting sidewalk by using a shorelining technique, you might ultimately lift the cane entirely up onto the surface, but in doing so, you're going to have to slow your pace because and be more methodical because um, it's going to get lodged. And at that rate, you should be able to find the edge of the driveway fairly easily. In this case, on this ramped curb, there would normally be um, truncated domes or some other surface that would allow you to detect that you're about to enter a hazardous uh, vehicle area, but it's obscured by the snowpack right at the moment. The Dakota Disc. Okay, what I want to describe to you a little bit is the Dakota Disc. And uh, you can see that um, it's designed for snow and rough surfaces. It's about a six inch diameter disc. It's produced by Ambutech. And I'm very proud to say I was able to collaborate with Ambutech on this product and develop it for North Dakotans. And um, really excited that it is caught on and people are using it around the country and even in other countries like Australia and Norway. Um, 
Canada was particularly excited about um, getting this product for its people and Ambutech is based in Canada. Well that said, I'm not uh, trying to do a commercial for Ambutech, but I'm a big believer in this product for uh, snow conditions. Um, what you'll see again is the angle allows it to float over rough surfaces. One limitation is, is you cannot probe into soft snow with this, um, but you can see there's kind of a path here. There is fresh snow and you could use some techniques to dig in and to find your surface, but what this is particularly good at is moving between, for instance, the two ridges of snow on this path. And if need be, I can lift it up and I can get a sense of how high that snowbank is, uh, how soft or hard it is, um, and in fact then able to probe it and determine whether it's a surface I want to walk into. Using a telescoping hiking pole. Okay, this is a little unorthodox, but I'm a fan of telescoping hiking poles. Some people obviously can benefit from using a support can with either a rubber tip or ice cleats on the bottom. And, and certainly that's within our scope of practice. This is a little unorthodox in that in nowhere in our literature we would find that uh, a hiking pole use is described. But being in this climate, having worked with people with a variety of orthopedic issues, uh, and even without issues, you find that you have very uneven terrain. You have snow ridges that have to be stepped over, people waiting at curbs for buses where they have to step down into a surface perhaps a foot or more and onto an icy surface. What I like about the telescoping hiking pole is that it appeals to people of many ages, um, both young people and middle-aged people that I've worked with who have low vision, who may not need the white cane for probing, but uh, are more comfortable when they have uh, a device like this in their hand. It allows them to step up and down off of curbs and on other surfaces uh, with a greater sense of security. And also I think the stigma of using a support cane for some folks um, is not there with the hiking pole because again, for a lot of uh, men, for instance, who uh, consider themselves outdoorsmen, they're not gonna feel as uncomfortable using a device like this. And what, I, again, I like, they usually have a carbide tip, is um, you're gonna be able to dig into icy surfaces or into a snowbank and really feel as though you have a good, firm support as you step down and shift your balance. The unorthodox, yet practical, straddle stance. This is a particularly challenging circumstance. I'd actually recommend that you alter your route versus going over a large ridge like this with perhaps a one and a half foot drop off. I would also recommend if you find circumstances like this in your neighborhood that you advocate strongly for yourself to talk to the city and um, be ready to lodge a complaint. That said, there are times just after a storm where you find circumstances like this and it may be unavoidable. So under those circumstances, I like to use what I call the straddle technique. You could use this with a regular cane, but again, in this circumstances, I would recommend a telescoping hiking pole because of the good grip you get from the carbide tip. So that would look like this. You get up close to the edge and again, extreme caution, and at this point, what you're going to need to do is plant your hiking pole firmly and then you're going to have to, even though there's a chance of disorientation or misalignment, you're going to have to turn your body to the side like a horse stance and step over. So this is what I call the straddle stance and then you bring your leg back over. And again, it may be difficult to get realignment. You're going to have to do the best you can under these circumstances. Alternatives to outdoor travel during extremely inclement weather. Winter travel for people with a visual impairment is manageable, it can even be fun, but it does come with risks. My main advice is to plan ahead and know the weather conditions. Know what the wind chill is. Know what the snowfall prediction will be for a given day. The circumstances can change a lot over a short period of time. Terrain can change if sidewalks become snow covered and it becomes difficult to make safe street crossings when it's very cold and normally very cautious, careful people can become impulsive under those circumstances because it is very uncomfortable. So again, be willing to make alternative transportation plans if need be. 
on those days when it's just too nasty for anyone to be outside, you might consider finding a friend and playing a game of Trex by APH. It's a great way to hone your orientation skills while you're looking forward to warm weather again.